into the gap. You either have reason to go through the gap or you don't. Joggers, dog walkers, southern water workers, parents and kids from across the field in Morscombe, snow day slope sliders and off-road motorbikes are blessed to know the gap. The 48 bus and the learner drivers doing the loop of Bevendine's road to nowhere trundle past, focused on other forms and other spaces between forms. Dink sits, aware this is how she looks like a good dog. She looks at me and then looks back at the gap, then back at me again. I give the nod and she scarpers across the road, up the gap between the creamy rendered 50s council semis, through the scrappy sycamores and up to the community garden. Bevendine Community Garden is one of a number of community projects up this end of town where the dancing, crusty rave protesters of the 90s found common ground with their lifelong deaners and schoomers and did their bit to make something good out of pre-gentrification Brighton. Self-build, rent-capped homes for life fringe the estates of Brighton and long-neglected allotments have been transformed into eco-learning, sustainable living and forest school arenas encouraging those most in need to get their feet onto the earth, their hands into the dirt, and the seeds of better futures into their bellies and their brains. These projects have developed whatever the political climate around them. The Bevendine Community Garden now has a productive vegetable garden, a fire circle, a compost loo, a pond inhabited by vertebrates and invertebrates, a shed that has managed to survive several acts of vandalism, a pizza oven, a bunch of volunteers making things happen there, Sarah Fernie's Forest Club for Kids, a story circle regularly visited by Arthur, Odysseus, Beowulf and Odin. The Bevendine Community Garden is a, a space of unity and community. And for me, I discovered it at a time, you know, when we were at the end of COVID, had a lot of isolation, um, struggled with anxiety. And it really um, made me feel more grounded in where I live. It was It's so welcoming. There's a real kind of sanctuary and a sense of calm. And you can engage in whatever way that feels right for you at the time. In a very COVID aware environment, we were able to continue coming to this magic place um, for our community, but also for ourselves and take that optimism that we grew here kind of back to our own lives away from the garden. It's like a place to come back to. It's... um... It's a spot for, you know, connecting with people while you're doing something with your hands. It's like <laughs> expressing it like that might sound um, uh, very simple, but actually it is. I mean, it's, it's you are chatting with people, you're socializing at the same time that you are collaborating together to make something grow. I thought I needed connection with people and this was one place where where that grew um, in, in a way I hadn't expected. People access the, the joy of having your hands in dirt <laughs> through to the joy of having some fresh food on your plate. One of my favourite things in the garden is the hedge. I remember having a, the, tr- the hedge planting day and planting these tiny 10, 20 centimetre saplings into the ground, all different, hazel, apple, um, dog rose um, and many others. And to see them, see it now, I think it's over 10, 10 years later since they planted it, it's children's Um, childhood in a hedge Um, and to see it being relayed a couple of years ago and then um, how beautiful it looks today especially as spring's starting to come I'm quite excited to see all the blossoms coming but that is a real 
it shows you the time and energy that people and love that people have put into the community garden in one stretch of hedgerow that will be there for the years to come. It it's, shows all the seasons and life uh, as, as it should be, happy and full of love. It's a shared space, that it's not just the humans that use the space, um, it's also the wildlife and the birds, and um, but also it's not just the community garden gardeners, not the volunteers that use the space. There's lots of people that come along and just have a, have a picnic here or a cup of tea, and um, we wanted to kind of get that message across. It's not don't do this and you can't do that, but actually you're welcome and share your ideas and um, tell us what's special about it. I love the community garden at Bevendine because it's a place for the community to get together. That might sound a bit obvious, but it's true. And I love the foreign feast events where a few people who live locally get together and share some food. I think the benefits to everyone's mental health and well-being from being out in a bit of nature and sitting around the fire and sharing some food and meeting their neighbours are absolutely massive and the community garden gives a chance for that to happen. Uh, what do I love about the Bevendine Community Garden? Well, it's those three things. Bevendine, community, garden. Uh, it's in Bevendine and I love Bevendine. I've been living here for 15 years now. Uh, community, it is a space where all sorts, uh, all sorts of people from, a, from across uh, Bev and Dean have met here for all sorts of things uh, and it's a garden, I love being outside, I love uh, cooking over the fire, um, I love just seeing the whole thing change through the seasons um, and yeah if I had to say what my favourite spot in the garden was I would say right here.